Dear friends, welcome to the next session for software engineering and designing concepts. So in today's session, we will be talking about black box testing in greater details. So as uh, mentioned in the previous session, we uh, said that black box testing are uh, is a type of testing which uh, has essentially two different approaches. They are known as equivalence class partitioning and boundary value analysis. So we shall initially talk about in equivalence class partitioning uh, in the very beginning where the input values to a program are partitioned into equivalence classes. So if we uh, talk about the term, the only term equivalence class, it means that we have two different classes and each of the class are equivalent to one another so partitioning is done in such a way that the programs behave in a similar way to every input value belonging to an equivalence class now let us consider that c1 is one class which has value 1 value 2 value 3 dot 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 so on similarly class 2 would have value 1 1 value 1 2 value 1 3 and so on respectively so we have to partition these two classes in such a way that if the program is behaving in a certain way to value 1 it should also behave in the similar way to value 3 similarly if v12 is been addressed by the program in a uh, in a particular way then v13 should also have the similar type of representation for the program however we should not be confused with the fact that the val if the program behaves in a certain way with value 1 essentially it should not behave in the similar manner with value 1 1 so these two values belongs to the two different classes but they will not have the similar way of representation or similar functionalities or similar effect with the program because both of them belongs to two separate classes. Now let us go into further discussion with this equivalence class partitioning. So first of all we have to identify that why do we have to define these equivalence classes. So to test the code with just one representative value from each equivalence class. This is the first and foremost point that we should remember or we should analyze because instead of analyzing each and every value from a range of values which nearly has similar characteristics and properties, it is sufficient for us to test with just one value from a range of values or from a particular equivalence class as good as testing using any other values from the equivalence class so suppose we have a number of values so c1 is an equivalence class we have a number of values v1 v2 v3 so instead of testing v1 v2 and v3 separately we just have to identify or we just have to take one particular sample in order to test it and we can conclude that it will be the same for the other two values as well. Now how do we determine these equivalence classes? So first of all we have to examine the input data. Once the input data is examined there are few general guidelines for determining the equivalence classes. So these general guidelines we will be talking about in our subsequent sessions. So we have to First of all, find out what type of input data the program is handling. So if the input data to the program is specified by a range of values, for example, there are numbers between 1 to 5000. So if we have to test the numbers between 1 to 5000, we have to take one valid and two invalid equivalence classes for defining the entire testing suite. So when we are talking about test suite, 
we essentially mean that we have all the positive values as well as negative values or all the values which will pass that particular test and all the values which will not pass that particular test so we will combine them into a, a suit like representation so here if we are checking out the numbers from 1 to 5000 we have to find out values which the program will accept which is from 1 to 5000 and the values which the program will reject that is beyond 5000 and before we get the value 1 so here if we look at this diagrammatic representation we will see that between 1 to 5000 including both of them this is the valid test set testing set or testing suit again the invalid starts beyond 5000 and before 1 so this is one test testing range or this is one class the second class is the next invalid class and the third class may be the valid class so this one two and three all together forms the testing suite now if an input is an enumerated set of values which means a b or c then one equivalence class for the valid input values and the other equivalence class for invalid input values should be defined so it means that suppose we have this kind of enumerated values like a b and c we have to find keep those uh, values which belongs to or which possess the similar characteristics in class one and maybe in class 2, we can keep other values like hash, 1, 2, 3, question mark, etc. So, we have to find out for ourselves. So, here we do not have to uh, find out a range of values which are not valid. Or we do not have to keep two separate values. Because we are not analyzing a range, we are simply checking out the individual values and their properties now let us see for example a program reads an input value in the range of 1 to 5000 so whenever we have such a range we have to make sure that we will exclude the invalid values into separate classes the exclusion might be those values which are prior to one and into one class and which are beyond 5000 to another class now it also computes the square root of an input number that means if i in give um, as an input um, an integer as an input or a value as an input the program will calculate the square root and the result will be given out so this is the problem statement basically so here as already mentioned there will be three different types of equivalence classes first of all the set of negative class which means this section then the set of integers in the range of 1 to 5000 which is the valid set and the integers which are beyond 5000 so these uh, classes we have already categorized and now we shall only be evaluating those values from the equivalence class which is the valid one so when we are talking about designing the test suit for such a program it must have representatives from each of the equivalence classes so if you look carefully into this representation this is the set of negative numbers which belongs to the invalid set this is the this value represents the invalid class which belongs to the numbers beyond 5000 and 500 is a value which will be representing the valid class now testing on only one value or maybe at the max two values from the entire range will actually suffice for testing the functionality of this program next we will talk about boundary value analysis so boundary value analysis is also a type of black box testing approach 
So there are some typical programming errors which occur at the boundaries of this equivalence classes. It might be purely due to psychological factors and programmers often fail to see special pro processing required at the boundaries of equivalence classes. Like when we saw uh, the previous example, we have the boundary values as 1 and 5000 respectively. So it depends upon the psychological aspect or psychological factor or decision making of the programmer in order to include both the lower or the upper limit or to exclude them. However, both of them shall definitely have its own significance of representation. So we have to check for the boundary values as well and these boundary values needs to be analyzed. So programmers may improperly use less than instead of less than or equal to in boundary value analysis. So when we are talking about the invalid set for the range 1 to 5000, so if the programmers make a small mistake like representing the invalid class into invalid class into less than or equal to 1 instead of less than 1 then it is a serious mistake. So hence it is important that we have to select the test cases at the boundaries of the different equivalence classes. That means we have to identify the boundary values and work according to the requirements of the program. Now talking about the same example for a function which computes the square root of an integer in the range of 0 to 5000, we also have to include 0 and 1 as well as 5001. So along with 5000 because these are not negative numbers and 5001 if you square root it, it will give you a value which is within the range of 5000. So we have to check for the valid and invalid test cases using this particular testing suite. So next we will talk about debugging. So once the errors are identified, it is necessary to identify the precise location of the errors and fix them. So each debugging approach has its own advantages and disadvantages and each is useful in the appropriate circumstances. So without the identification of the location, precise location of the errors, we will not be able to fix them. Talking about debugging, so brute force method is one of the most common method for debugging. It is uh, the least efficient method. Program is loaded with various print statements and they print the intermediate values and some of the printed values generally helps to identify the error. So, however, this, this type of uh, method, methodology is used by very naive users where generally what we used to do is we print the values whether the program is um, control is being transferred effectively or not. So, this is all for this session. Thank you. The next session we shall be discussing more about these methods.